Welcome to the next session of our cruise planning and cruising course. Tonight we're going to cover chapter 8, dealing with communications on the water. Well, welcome back for part 2, and I'm going to try to pick up sort of where I left off and expand a little bit more on the uh, radio telephone watch. According to the FCC rules, Recreational boats equipped with a marine VHF radio must have the equipment switched on and tuned to channel 16, which is 156.800 megahertz, whenever the vessel is underway and the radio is not being used to communicate. A radio telephone listening watch is maintained on channel 16 for calling and reply purposes. Dual watch to relieve congestion on channel 16, the FCC established channel 9 as an alternate calling channel for non-commercial vessels at the request of the U.S. Coast Guard. Since the Coast Guard does not routinely announce urgent marine information broadcast or weather warnings on channel 9, the use of a dual watch is recommended. The dual watch capability of a marine VHF radio allows the boater to monitor to the primary operating channel, which is 16, and a secondary channel, 9, at the same time. In the dual watch mode, the radio receiver switches rapidly between the primary and secondary channels. When activity is detected on either channel, the receiver will stop switching and dwell on the active channel. If possible, recreational boaters should maintain a dual watch on channel 16 and channel 9 when underway. And I would add to say, in highly congested areas like East Coast, you know, up around New York and, and uh, Miami, places where you have a lot, a lot of boat traffic and it's really tough to get a channel. Uh, on Lake Superior, we don't we don't see anything like that. And I think in the BFIs, there's not that much traffic down there. So the likelihood of you using Channel 9 as an alternate is probably pretty slim. The DSC watch, recreational boats equipped with a very high frequency with a VHF digital selective calling capability should maintain a watch on channel 70 whenever the vessel is underway and the radio is not being used to communicate. Different classes of DSC radios are available with various features and cost. Recreational boats equipped with the medium and high frequency DSC equipment should have the radio turned on and set to an appropriate DSC distress calling channel of one of the radio telephone distress channels whenever the vessel is underway and the radio was not being used to communicate. If the MFHF radio does not have DSC capability, voluntary vessels are advised to maintain a watch on 2182 kilohertz whenever the vessel is underway and the radio is not being used to communicate. Figure 8-4 is a listing of the medium and high frequency distress channels. Satellite systems. Vessels equipped with EPIRBs are capable of transmitting a distress alert automatically by floating free when a vessel sinks or when manually activated. EPIRBs transmit distress alerts to rescue coordination centers, RCCs, via satellite. EPIRBs are rely on satellite systems to relay distress alerts to the appropriate RCC ashore. Two categories of EPIRBs are common on recreational boats. Category 1 EPIRBs include a hydrostatic release that enables the device to float free from a sinking vessel and activate automatically. Category 2 EPIRBs must be manually activated. Figure 8.5 illustrates a typical EPIRB, Category 1 EPIRB. Emergency Positioning, in, emergency position Information Radio Beacon, EPIRB. Vessels fitted with EPIRB should check the battery expiration date, the hydrostatic release replacement date, proof of registration expiration date as part of a periodic safety check. EPIRBs must be registered with the National Oceanographic and Atmospheric Administration, or NOAA. The registration information and corresponding proof of regu registration decal are valid for a two-year period. The FCC requires renewal of the decal prior to its expiration date. A new proof of registration decal will be issued upon successful renewal. EPIRBs may be registered and renewed via the U.S. 401 megahertz beacon registration database system. Birds. Here's 
and marine safety information on the VHF marine safety information is broadcast over channel 16 from the US Coast Guard weather information is broadcast over NOAA weather radio stations WX 1 to 7 there's three different or seven different channels uh, from the weather and typically they're so they don't overlap and scan through those weather channels one through seven and you'll find one in your area that gives you a good strong signal and that typically should be giving you the local weather in many areas MSI is transmitted over specific high frequency narrow band direct printing channels and uh, these are specifically designed frequencies in the medium and high frequency bands and I assume that's so you can get um, information designated uh, I know in Bayfield, up in Lake Superior, we routinely get um, warnings um, over channel 16, and they recommending us then to uh, switch to another channel. And cell phones and smartphones. Um, initially, uh, my personal opinion on having cell phones on board is like, well, that's fine, but... Um, the problem with using a cell phone, you have to call somebody. You have to know their number, and it's a private one-way communication. If you need help uh, using a cell phone, those around you are never going to hear it. And there is some short-range uh, problems, uh, 3 to 10 miles from a cell tower. You've got good point-to-point -point communications. Uh, should not be used for distress. And the, the valuable to the inland boater, you can access marine safety, local inf information, access emails. And in the BVIs, they like you. I think they uh, assign a, a cell phone to each boat. And if you have problems on your boat, they will not to use the cell phone to call your base station to, I need a new dinghy. I, I, my engine's not working. I've got some problem with my boat. Um, all the different charter companies are not anxious to have their internal problems broadcast on, a, on an open mic using the VHF radio. So um, for, for those communications, the uh, cell phones work great. And most of the marinas today have got Wi-Fi available for you. And you can bring your laptops. You can go online, get your download, your email, um, weather information, local information. You know, where's the best place to eat? What bars are open? Um, uh, you can use that maybe as you know, contacting the local restaurants to make reservations, and uh, of course it allows you to use the, your smartphones, tablets, and, and uh, smartphones and stuff. Much more available, valuable for the, you're very valuable for them and boater, and uh, they are ideal for staying in touch with family and friends as you cruise inland or near shore. The con is that they can only connect to the nearest cell phone tower and uh, they don't really work well for emergencies. We have an uh, experience with a situation up there on the big lake and I won't, I won't share it at this point, but uh, the cell phone did, did raise, um, was used for communication, but it was um, not with a real happy outcome. But... Uh, I can sometime you can ask me that and I'll 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 give I'll give you the details of that situation. Um, with that, I think that pretty well covers it, um, and uh, I'll look forward to maybe a discussion later when we uh, when it's our turn of the barrel. I hope you've enjoyed the presentation, and I'm sorry I don't have any cookies to share. Um, this uh, this format doesn't allow the, the social interaction, but uh, thank you very much, and uh, we'll see you on the water.